everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Misty and today we're going to be talking all about the learning aids that I use throughout my homeschool year. I wanna jump right into the video, but first I want to say, make sure you hit the subscribe button for more content like this. I do a lot of homeschooling things. In fact, what you're looking at behind me is my brand new homeschool classroom and I'm so excited to reveal it to you guys. So this is just a little sneak peek and the video will be coming up very soon on the channel. So make sure you're subscribed so you see that in your feed when the time comes. Also, the like button lets me know that this is the type of content that you enjoy, so I know what to make for you in the future. Now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and look at the everyday learning aids that we use in our homeschool setting. So the very first thing I want to talk about is my favorite thing, and that is sensory bins. Sensory bins are an awesome tool for your classroom. I recommend them for every homeschooler if you have little ones. And it's a great way to learn and explore and play through the senses. It also can help them hone in, calm down, relax, and focus. This coming school year, I plan to use sensory bins a lot of the time to kind of go with the theme of the unit we are studying. So they'll change out according to that. Every now and then I will mix it up. The way I love to use sensory bin play outside when they just ask to do it because they love it, is I use it when I'm doing things that require more of their focus and less fidgeting around. What I mostly use it for is things like when I'm doing chapter book reading. I do not expect my two and five year old to sit still long enough for me to read an entire chapter out of a, a chapter book. I tend to choose chapter books that are beyond their learning level and I do that purposely to expose them to more in-depth stories than what they're used to reading. But I can't expect them to just sit there and not fidget and to just listen for 20, 30 minutes of reading. So what the sensory bin does is it gives them something to put their hands into and to not feel like they're just sitting in eternity listening to me. And that way they're hearing the stories, they're being exposed to these stories, but at the same time, they have something to do with their own hands. It's worked great for us over the past year and I plan to continue that. So sensory bins are huge. I highly recommend them for your homeschooling. Another thing I plan to put more into our school year this year, we did it a little bit last year, but I'm going to try my best to really hone in and make sure that I am applying this to our classroom, is morning invitations. A morning invitation is an activity that would be set out pretty much every day routinely for kids to know where to go and to find an activity to explore first thing in the morning. This is helpful for me too. The reason why it benefits me, the mom, the teacher is because in the mornings when I'm still trying to get all my ducks in a row and get everything ready, they have something set out ready for them to explore and play and to learn. So if you're a mama who likes to like roll out of bed and start school along with them, this is a great option. You can set it up the night before. The kids can explore it in the morning as you're kind of waking up and getting out of your own grogginess and getting breakfast ready. For me, I'm already up by the time they start school. I'll be up cooking breakfast. So this will give them the time to explore an activity while I'm getting breakfast ready. Also, if one of them finishes breakfast early, they can go play with it while the other one eats. And while I'm getting the girls ready, one's a little more independent, so that activity is still available for them to use while I'm getting everybody ready for the day. I got that idea from Seven Days of Grey off of Instagram, if you're wondering. So that's where I got the idea. There are a multitude of ideas on her Instagram page, but I will be sharing the ones that I do here as well in the future. So you can look forward to that in future videos. Another thing we use, the obvious one, books. Books are they're just so important. So important for children to explore and see things outside of just what they visually get in your home and to the exposure that they get in the outside world. They may see a bird outside, but a book provides so much information about that bird that they wouldn't get just by looking at it. They can look at a bird and yes, they can figure out their living habitat, They'll figure out what foods they like to eat if they're watching them eat. They'll watch how they fly, how they interact with other birds, what they look like. All of that can be learned without a book. Of course, that's how science really works. <laughs> Observation. But a book offers so much more. It enriches education so much. I can pull out a book and show them birds that are all the way across the world that they would never get the exposure to without a book. It shows them the internal parts of a bird where you know, normally you're not going to open a bird up and find out what's in there normally. So a book offers them an understanding of what their body looks like on the inside. There's, there's so many reasons to make sure that you're adding books to your education, whether it be both fiction and nonfiction, obviously. Nonfiction is great for education, but also fiction creates beautiful stories that can kind of just add to your learning. Like if you're doing a unit study, like I'm talking about birds right now because that's what we're going to work on. I can give them really cute and exciting silly stories that will just make them more enticed to the idea of learning about that unit. 
So make sure that you're grabbing books and adding that to your schooling. Sensory bins and books are probably the top two things where I'm like, you, you gotta do it. What I forgot to say earlier, when I was talking about the sensory bins, also the chapter books are a learning aid that we do. But like I said, the point of adding chapter books as a learning aid too is to give them deeper stories with more detail and more action and things going on than they would get from children's books on their level. So I just wanna make sure you guys know that that chapter books read by me are considered a learning aid too. Another great learning aid that you can do is game schooling. They don't have to necessarily be with a unit. I'm just, right now I'm really heavily involved in trying to make sure my units are together for when school starts. But game schooling just adds a lot of fun to homeschooling. So my child, sometimes she's like, all right, I'm kind of over the same old same when it comes to reading and math naturally because that's a tedious thing that we do on a regular basis and it, a lot of times that work can be repetitive so games can come in and break things up and make things fun i have game schooling videos on this channel at this point when i'm filming this only one is up but i have a second one that will go up i'm not sure of the date but you'll kind of get an idea of what i mean for for games but if you don't know there are so many games out there that are great for learning that you can add into your homeschooling. Like right now, two I'm looking at are Financial Peace, what is it? Um, one's called Financial Peace Junior or something like that. It's by Dave Ramsey. And another one is Money Bags. Those are two games that I'm looking at to purchase that will help my child understand math and finance at their level. There are plenty of games too that add to science. There are games that add to understanding phonics like I, I have a game back here that is all about understanding phonics so make sure you're looking for games that have the ability to educate your children and to kind of break up the monotonous that can happen with curriculum if you're choosing to do like book text like curriculum there are companies that focus heavily on just these types of games so if you just do quick google searches you will find those companies and find plenty of games now my third favorite probably out of this whole list this list is random i know but this is probably, so sensory bins and books are the top two. And then third would be this, that is block play. Block play is huge for many reasons too. So when I'm doing those chapter books, if I don't have a sensory bin ready, great blocks are an awesome option. Blocks offer a lot of open-ended play, which is really great for the development of a child's brain. We have quite a few blocks and I'm always looking to add to it. So we have those giant Melissa and Doug cardboard boxes um, that are like bricks. We have magnet tiles, we have what we call soft blocks, which are also known as foam blocks. We have mega blocks, which are the huge versions of Legos. We have Legos, we have those wooden blocks that kind of come with a train, and I'm always looking to get more blocks. In fact, I've been eyeballing a few different types. And on top of them just creating great play, like I said, open-ended play is also, you can use them once again for those moments where you need the child to hear you, but something to have their hands in, like when I'm doing the chapter books, I'll use it for that. I already said that though, I think I said that. Another great option for these is you can use them in their education. Is your kid tired of doing just regular math worksheets? Great, pull out blocks, have them add two blocks with three blocks and you get, what, five blocks. You can do color sorting if they're learning colors. You can put stickers, post-it notes, anything like that on the letter blocks and have them stack the blocks and create words. So like one block will say C, the next block will say A, and the next block will say T, tongue twister there. You put them together, they spell cat. That's another great way to use them. Also engineering, for minds that really are inquisitive about engineering type things, Tell them something like, I want you to build a bridge for animals to cross a freeway. I think that was another seven days of gray idea. I've, I've seen it somewhere. So you tell your child you have to create a bridge to go over top of a freeway, just like you would see in real life, so that animals can cross. So you would set out those animals, make a fake road, and have them build some sort of bridge over top of that road so that they can work on engineering skills. I can go on all day. I might make actually like a separate video going more in depth with all of these, but just know blocks, are really great. Another learning aid that my girls are very, very much into is role playing, costumes, creating like scenery and settings, and just being in character. You say you're exploring the human body or food, you can set up a fake restaurant, your kids can go through, you can set out healthy foods for them. If you feel fine with them cutting, maybe give them some, you know, kid friendly knives and have them cut the food. They can play restaurant with you. If they're learning about professions, 
get costumes that represent those professions. You, they can put on the costumes and you can set up little areas in your house where they can work on those jobs for fun. So that's another really great way to add to your learning. And the last one I want to talk about is nature. Nature is so useful. I feel like it just helps ground people just to like be around things in nature. So even if you're not outside, bring those things in from nature, bring in flowers, bring in grass, use them in your sensory play. I have a really great activity plan where we have to go outside and collect things to do it for our bird unit. There's something about getting your hands into the real earth and the things that grow from it and it enriching everything about your learning as well as being therapeutic for you and your child. So that's why I also highly recommend nature. Make sure you're bringing it in. Doesn't matter what season. Go outside, grab handfuls of snow, put it in a sensory bin, and there you go. There's your sensory for the day. So yes, those are learning aids that we will be using very regularly in our classroom from last year into this year. I'll be doing all of these. If you can think of any other really great learning aids, make sure that you put them in the comments down below so that other people can get your ideas and work on their own learning aids for their classroom and what suits them. But that's all I really have to say. I just wanted to share with you guys some of our learning aids. And once again, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for all the future content I'll have on this channel regarding our homeschooling adventures and trying to help you out with ideas, everything around that. And the like button is just letting me know that this is a video that you enjoyed so I know what to make for you in the future. And I will see you guys in the next video. Video. Have fun homeschooling. Bye.